Nigeria's career and non-career uh, ambassadors have an October 31 deadline to return to Abuja after they are recalled by President Bala Ahmed Tinubu. The country's uh, permanent uh, representatives to the United Nations in New York and Geneva are exempted from this recall due to their important roles in the upcoming uh, United Nations General Assembly taking place this month. President Bala Tinubu's special advisor on uh, media and publicity, Ajurin Gelali, explained that the action was taken by the president after a careful study of the present state of affairs at Nigerian consulate offices and embassies worldwide. Other reasons given for the recall include President Tinubu's determination to ensure that the country's affairs outside her shores are treated with word class efficiency as well as quality this is our focus on the program this evening welcome to nigeria today i am your carrier clinton Joining me in the studio to uh, discuss the recall of ambassadors is a uh, uh, regular face and a dependable friend of the house, Jide Ujo, an international affairs analyst. Welcome to Nigeria today. My pleasure. Good to see you. Same here. <laughs> also joining us uh, via Zoom is uh, Ambassador Godwin Agama. He's a former Under Secretary for African Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He was also Nigeria's ambassador to the Republic of Guinea-Bissau and concurrently president to the Republic of Cape Verde. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I'll start with you, uh, Ambassador uh, Godwin uh, Agama. They, uh, I know uh, uh, in international relations, uh, recall means different uh, thing to you know to different people depending on their perspective. Now, uh, what does this in this case, in our own case, what does this imply? What does it mean? Well, the recall of ambassadors who are the principal envoys of the president of the sending country is nothing spectacular. It's not a new thing. It's a routine. Uh, thing that happens every election uh, of every four years. Uh, and that has been happening in Nigeria since uh, independence, I believe. Uh, so uh, once a president comes into power and the ambassadors ought to have spent about three, four, four or five years, they are recalled. Uh, ambassador going out carries a letter from the appointing president addressed to the president of the country to which he's accredited or to the sovereign of the country to which is accredited. And the letter is, the ambassador is supposed to be his personal representative uh, in principle, but in reality, he represents the entire country, the government before the receiving state. The, the receiving state is a country to which you are accredited, to which you are sent to. So as he introduced me as a former ambassador to Guinea-Bissau, uh, Guinea-Bissau was a receiving state and Nigeria was a sending state. And an ambassador going abroad carries a letter from the president of him. When the new president comes to power, it's routine that he calls back those who have served three, four years back to Nigeria and sends a new set of people to the countries uh, to be accredited. So it's not a new thing, and it's a routine, as I said earlier. Oh, okay, uh, still on you, uh, Ambassador Godwin. Um, uh, in this, uh, what does it mean in relation to the uh, diplomatic uh, staff? I know uh, these uh, ambassadors, they have aides and other staff that work with them. Are they all coming uh, you know, back with them? Or how does it work? Well, I think in your introductory, you, you, you mentioned the President's recall exempted the two ambassadors to the UN offices in New York headquarters and the one in Geneva. And that, of course, is because the General Assembly of the UN is coming up uh, third week or third, third Tuesday of this month, sometime in, in September of this month. Those ambassadors ought to be opposed um, to conclude the meetings. And maybe they can return any time the president deems fit for them to come back, perhaps December, perhaps early in the new year. But uh, two things we ought to know, uh, take note of. In interstate relations, there are two institutions that uh, are uniquely connected and have a long history going back 
the state uh, uh, formation, the military, and the diplomatic service. Uh, they, are you hearing me? Okay. I was saying that the, the military and the diplomatic service are two unique institutions uh, in, in the state, in interstate relations. Uh, and they have rules that and uh, uh, presidents, rules, ethics, and all that are guide them. Uh, this, in, in, in the case of diplomatic service, it began even before modern democracy. Ambassadors used to be the personal representatives of the monarchs in the court of another monarch, the kings in Europe before. It was when the monarchs now became a constitutional monarchs, from absolute monarch to constitutional monarchs, that, uh, and then we have a, a representative democracies, the president began to appoint ambassadors. In the past, the ambassadors were princes of the ruling family, maybe the cousin or the nephew or the son of the king sent another court to represent him there. Thank you very much. Now, Judy, uh, um, <laughs> you had the introduction uh, uh, there by uh, Ambassador Godwin. However, the uh, the move has been met with a lot of uh, mixed reaction. Some have praised the government for improving the diplomatic relations, while others have, uh, you know, said uh, it's a uh, is a sign of instability. So, what? How do you see this? Um. First and foremost, we need to understand that uh, in diplomatic relations, nobody um, serves on a permanent basis in, uh, as an ambassador or high commissioner of another country. However, there are bureaucracies I, that are permanent, sort of. Uh, those who work with the ambassador or the high commissioner, mm -hmm. those are not routinely changed. But the leadership, which is uh, the ambassador of a country, gets changed. Like, and there are two categories. We need to also understand that there are two categories of ambassadors mm -hmm. or high commissioners. There are the career and the non-career ambassadors. So. The career ambassadors rise through the ranks and are deployed. Uh, I think the last check, Nigeria has about 110 uh, missions abroad. Although the, the, the last administration seems to have cut down uh, due to lack of funds, uh, decided to merge uh, some of them. And of course, you can also close down your uh, embassy due to political reasons, you know, like the face of we are having. Uh, with uh, ECOWAS is having with Niger Republic now. Nigeria can recall its ambassador to Niger Republic as the Niger Republic has even uh, you know, asked the French ambassador to leave the country within, I think, 48 hours, but the man has resisted. So a lot of face off happened, but in this particular instance, it's as a result of change of leadership at the ends of affairs in Nigeria. So um, I would have expected that the non-career, the, the career ambassadors be left in their post mm. or moved to another, another um, country while the non-career ambassadors, those who are appointed on political consideration, then you can recall them. Um, however, everything starts and ends at the you know, discretion of Mr. President. That's why we say we have an executive president that is very powerful, that can dispense favor, because he is a favor. Uh, some people are already high uh, ambassadorial position uh, in the in, for the incoming administration. So they are looking at ah, no, I want to be the ambassador to UK ambassador to and and, and just like the National Assembly committees, there are GC positions <laughs> and there are non GC positions. I mean, I, the I I I recall that even before the second letter that now says everyone should return. Ambassador, I think Sarafa Abdin, uh, the Nigerian High Commissioner, High Commissioner to UK, was the first to be recalled that his tenure has expired. And later, they now issued another 
uh, circular to say all career and non career ambassadors uh, should return to Nigeria on or before October 31st, but exempting the Nigeria permanent delegate to the United Nations and then the Geneva. So, all, 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 all things said, is a political appointment. Mm -hmm. And for political appointment, you serve at the pleasure of the president. Even if you are a career ambassador, you are still at the pleasure. It's like a permanent secretary, you know, in the ministry. So, uh, you can be removed, you can be redeployed at the you, uh, you know at the whims and caprice of the government of the day. So this is why, uh, in my own thinking, I would have expected that for those because there was no discrimination as to whether you have spent three years or four years in your at your duty post. Mm -hmm. What it says is that all of you, with the exception of the one to Geneva and the one to the United Nations should come back on or before October 31st. There should have been that explanatory as to um, uh, whether those who have spent up to four years, like the Nigeria High Commissioner to UK, that was said to have um, uh, you know, and spent the mandatory period he was supposed to serve. Uh, that's, that, but the, the circular that was sent did not uh, talk about whether you have spent three years or you have spent four okay, years. Okay, but uh, Jude, before you go, you go further, I want to ask, uh, what uh, impact can this kind of recall, you know, have on the country's foreign relations? Does it have any uh, well, impact? Well, not, not negative, not ne I'm not seeing any negative um, impact because this is not as a result of face-off with another country. So it's not like Nigeria is having a spat mm -hmm. with another country, then you are recalling. And or that they were being recalled as a result of non-performance or for uh, disciplinary actions. No, this recall was, like the ambassador said, was as a result of change of government. And it is at the pleasure of the president to change at any time he so wishes. In fact, we have seen ambassadors that serve only for six months, for one year, uh, because if you are no longer in the good books of the appointee, uh, you can be recalled, you can be dropped. So it, 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 what I think may be the negative aspect is the instability for the family, because you cannot leave your family in U.S. or in U.K. or in Russia or in, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in Germany and come without them because they are schooling there at the expense of the government of the day. So if you are recalled, that means the family also have to move. So what I have noticed with the families of many ambassadors, they rather will leave their spouses and their family in the country and then go and maybe they can have the family visit. Because situations where you think you are going to stay for a particular length of time in a, in a post and you are recalled under one year or two years, it has deleterious effect on the family stability. But like I said, for uh, the young, the uh, senior civil servants and those who are working in the embassies, who are not the ambassador de designate or the, con uh, the high commissioner, this may not affect them. So they, they have a more relatively permanent stay wherever they are posted. Okay, uh, we'll stop here now and uh, take a short break. It's still Nigeria today. We'll be right back. The conversation will continue after this break. Don't go away. The implementation of the ruling is also dependent on another aspect or another harm of government. Nowhere in the world will allow under digital economy for banks not to be dispensing domestic currency in that economy. What would make this one different? We want to know what they do as occupation. All of these are attributes that our questions have been designed to investigate. In a few days to come, we'll see that we are all around.
their own crimes and uh, uh, everywhere in Nigeria, uh, telling people to cooperate. Welcome to Nigeria today. Welcome back. This is still uh, Nigeria today, and we are looking at the recall of our Nigerian ambassadors. Uh, uh, my guests are still here with me, a gentleman, uh, Vazum, and one here in the studio. Uh, ambassador Godwin, uh, you know, the uh, according to the uh, statement being issued, um, said uh, the the president, after a careful study of the state of affairs in uh, uh, the Nigerian consulate offices and embassies worldwide, uh, you know, uh, decided. To to recall uh, them and of course is determined to ensure that uh, uh, we have a world class efficiency and quality uh, uh, that we characterize the foreign and domestic service delivery to citizens, residents and prospective visitors alike. Now, you have been an ambassador. What are some of the challenges that you uh, uh, experienced there that you, sh you think the present uh, administration should uh, look into if uh, they are making new appointments? Should they make new appointments? Well, I, I think, as I said earlier, the recall is a routine matter. It has always happened after a, an election cycle is completed. So that is nothing new about it. And uh, when these ambassadors at post were appointed, both career and non-career people, or those we call political people, were all appointed at the same time, appeared before the Senate and were sent out with letters by the same month. So uh, if they have done three years of, or more, or three and a half years, or whatever number of months, and they are recalled, well, as uh, uh, Dr. Gide says over there, it's uh, at the pleasure of the president uh, that they hold the appointment, and it can be recalled any time. Uh, if you are an ambassador and you are recalled, not because of uh, you've done anything wrong, and you are not declared a persona non grata by your host, it's something to be happy about. There's nothing wrong with that. However, what I thought the public should be concerned about is the quality uh, of, the, of the people that are going to be appointed to take over from those who are being recalled. Very often, uh, party membership uh, is given priority. Meanwhile, there is a pool, a large pool of people of good character, people of experience, whether uh, top civil servants or people who have been trained in the diplomatic service, who don't need to learn the ropes again. They are in the, the, what you call uh, uh, the core of reservists. We have so many of them in foreign affairs who have retired. They are not tired, they are not old. Some even retired before they were 60 because they have been so brilliant and they passed their exams and they became directors before they were uh, uh, up to 60. So, if, but if you spend eight years as a director, you are retired. So some people retired maybe at 58 or 57. And in 10 years' time, they are still under 67. So uh, they are still competent, but it takes a lot to train a diplomat. And it takes a lot of experience for a diplomat, for an ambassador to be effective. Uh, if, if you have read whatever you read in the university, uh, and you have been in politics or in other professions, you are not the same person as the person who had entered the diplomatic service uh, from level eight and grew up there. So I think maybe the concern should be who do we appoint to replace these people? Not that they are being recalled. Recalling them is not anything new. It's not bad. It doesn't tell anything bad about the people being recalled or about the government itself. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Jude, uh, uh, now uh, the, the president is determined to have efficient and quality service delivery. Now, what should this administration be looking at in uh, the appointment? Like he, I know he's uh, just reeled out some, you know, for us to uh, achieve this. What should they be looking at for in the new uh, appointees? Well, I, I think um, first and foremost is the qualifications. Um, ambassadorial positions should not just be given to politicians who are just um, compens being compensated for electoral victory. And that's what we see more of. 
we see more of people who oh, we, we work for our party. You can see even the disputes that have ensued as a result of certain appointments the president has made in recent past, the latest being the NDDC board appointment, where particularly two states, Ondo and Crossover, say, oh, these persons did not work for our party. Why are you appointing him? They say, oh, one is even a member of PDP. Why should he come and eat? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I, I think, first and foremost, is don't give this position prominently to politicians, maybe 20% to politicians, 80% to qualified, trained uh, diplomats from the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two challenge is funding. Uh, our our, our uh, you know, uh, consulates and uh, embassies are not being well funded. And that's why they have not performed optimally. Uh, because it takes a lot of resources to fund embassies and consulates. And um, because of paucity of funds, um, you, you know, um, many of these diplomats, some of them are not even paid as a when due. They are being held a uh, backlog of allowances and salaries. And of course, uh, the immediate past administration uh, shut down a number of um, uh, embassies be, as a result of um, insufficient funding. And these, are, these embassies are not meant to generate, they are not income generating, uh, you know, uh, centers. Although they issue visas, uh, of course people pay visa fee, but how many people go to uh, apply for visa to Ghana? All the West African sub-region are visa free, you know, and uh, of course even Kenya now, visa on arrival and stuff. So you can't even depend very much on uh, issuance of visa fee. And then um, passports are is not issued by the embassy, it's issued by the immigration. Although they work uh, hand in hand with the, 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 uh, the embassies and the consulates. So we need to look at structure of our embassies abroad. Do we have enough funding for them? If we don't, can we streamline them further and make them, uh, you know, one person can serve as ambassador to two, three countries, you know? Uh, so it's not nothing new. And you, you don't actually need to have em, 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 embassies in all the 196 countries of the world because of the huge cost. So if you are not having, so you can have one person you know, servicing a number of countries, particularly if there is no volume, much volume of uh, work, because these people that you send out, you are going to be paying them in foreign currencies. But we don't have all the, uh, the embassies in all the countries of the world. No, I am saying no? we can streamline further. Okay. You are asking me about the challenges, mm -hmm. and I'm saying one, we should post out you know, professionals, people who are well trained, mm -hmm. and that if at all we want to mix them with uh, non career ambassadors, it should be like 20, maximum 30 percent, not 50 50, or even having more politicians as ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And I said uh, in, in, in another breath that there should be proper funding of our missions mm -hmm. uh, abroad, the embassies, the consulates, because uh, as it were, Many of them are crying for funding, mm -hmm. and since they are not generating funds in, in such quantum that they can rely on it to sustain themselves, they have to pay for services, electricity, water, mm -hmm. you know, security. They also have to be paid salaries and allowances. So, the uh, issue of funding also comes to mind. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, uh, where we draw the curtain for uh, Nigeria today. But I must thank uh, Ambassador Godwin Agama. He's a former Under Secretary for African Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He was also Nigeria's ambassador to the Republic of Guinea-Bissau and uh, concurrently accredited to the Republic of Cape Verde. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for having me. Also, we say a very big thank you to uh, Gide Uju, an international affairs analyst. Thank you so much for availing us your time. Always a pleasure. Thanks, sir.
And to our viewer, thank you for always being a part of this. Nigeria Today is weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24. Once again, thank you for watching. I am Ikeria Clinton. Goodbye.